Thank you for still staying with us. And now it's off the press. Of the press is the newspaper review, as you do know, where we take a look at our national dailies and try to dissect it as much as time would allow us to do and make sense of it. I won't be alone today. I'll be joined virtually by our own uh, seasoned analysts, Ezekiel Nya Etok. Good to have you this morning. Thanks for having me. Good to be with you. Right, so we have a couple of papers this morning, but we shall begin with the Punch newspaper already displayed on the screen, thanks to the crew there. And it says, MPDC planning 500,000 barrels per day production, that's according to Kerry on page 22. Sokapu Lampun's SCF as chair says, North faces hardest times. Also on page two, ECOWAS suspends Mali, blocks borders, soldiers declare self-president. Soldier, rather, declares self-president. That's on page nine. And we have MTEF, Senate threatens to sanction CBN, MPA, uh, FIRS, and others. The story is on page 21. Interesting. And then we have Keelins, again, 1,003 petitioners seek El Rufai's exclusion from MBA Comfab. Interesting, isn't it? That story is on page nine as well. Um, Errant supervisors arrested for leaking. Wow, that's an interesting story. For leaking the West African Senior Certificate examination questions. That's according to WAEC. The story is on page seven. And then we have Ethiopian Airlines defies FG, resumes flight to London on Friday. And the story is on page 21. Now, first flight departs Lagos at that time, you can see there, and then on Friday as well, the second flight, you have the details there. No commercial flight has been cleared to lift passengers from Nigeria, the federal government declares. All right, we'll see who wins. It looks like it's a battle of words there. We have the picture story from Lagos, uh, University of Lagos. Shayombo begs Unilag uh, unions for support in maiden meeting. And that story is on page eight. Interesting pictures coming out from the crowd that I can see. It seemed to me that we have forgotten completely about coronavirus and the protocols, safety protocols. Well, we'll come to that. The story is on page eight, uh, but the crux of the matter is that the acting vice uh, chancellor has resumed already. And that's Professor Shoyombo. Islamic year, Oshun Kano declared today public holiday on page seven. And village head and 10 others killed in southern Kaduna, Sokapo alleges yet again. The story is on page three, I believe. And eight of our staff tested positive for COVID-19. That is O-O-U-T-H. And that's on page 12. Serial killer protesters storm command headquarters and IG deploys uh, detectives. That's on page 12. Plenty of stories to deal with killings and insecurity on the punch this morning. And Ogun Prophet arraigned for defiling 15-year-old girl during so-called, let's say, that's a so-called spiritual cleansing. Unfortunately, that story is on page four. Grab a copy for yourself. And Fire Me disowns viral presidential campaign poster by local government boss. That story, again, is on page 13. All right, may I now hand over to our analyst today to help us make sense of the things that we are reading and hearing and seeing. It's over to you, sir. Thank you. And again, always a pleasure to be with you. Um, the very first story I would like to look at is the headlined banner story, which is Ethiopian airline defies FG and resumes flight um, to London on Friday. The, I look at a few things. The very first thing is that it is a scheduled flight. Right. And I may not be a specialist in aviation, but my understanding of a scheduled flight is that of different from the evacuation flight. Scheduled flight means the commercial flight. It means people have 
paid for the flight. Uh, it means that it is um, something that uh, whoever wants to go out. And I find it almost objectionable to think that um, an airline, <laughs> uh, least of all a foreign airline, uh, will have a say in a country against what has been uh, prescribed as a procedure in that country. Except, of course, there is something that gives them the audacity, something that gives them the boldness, something that gives them the effrontery to dare to do that. And that could be maybe a double speak uh, from the side of our uh, administrators. Is it possible that um, FAN or the authorities have um, had a different discussion from them and told them, well, if you meet these conditions or procedures, you'll be able to fly? And if that is the case, should that be unilateral? Should it be selective? Should it not be a general procedure which says any airline that is able to meet these conditions should be able to fly? I believe that there's need for a resumption of international flight for more reasons than one. Um, but I believe that such must be very orderly. It must be very transparently done. And it must take into cognizance or into consideration all the sides of the divide. Mm -hmm. And more so, depending on what we see, you know, this concept of foreign policy um, applies both ways. If we have a situation where we say, oh, we are fellow Africans, fellow Nigerians, or fellow Africans, so any African airline can operate, uh, then you can say, okay, maybe that's why they are doing that. But I think that we have come to a point where we must have Nigeria first, my very personal opinion, as the foreign policy thrust of this country. In which case, before I think in terms of other airlines who are coming in, I'm going to ask myself very first thing, to what extent have I been able to brief my Nigerian carriers to the end that they are even prepared and they are even ready before the foreign airlines? I think that if that was the case, I do not see, I would have rather seen, um, say, APIS or Ibom Air, you know, taking on the first international flight. But for you to tell me that Ethiopian Airlines is, Operating and they even have two flights. If you look at the details, there's one for, for morning and there's one for 4 p.m. And um, even the fares are stated in, in, in some of the papers that I went through. So for me, that is um, objectionable. And I think that um, in the briefing today, they should give us specifics as to how that is so. Mm -hmm. And if that has not been approved officially, they should go and interrogate the source of this story because there's no smoke without fire. Okay, right. let me look at um, another story that I found um, very interesting, and that is towards the bottom. And the okay. um, serial killer, protesters storm command headquarters, IG deploys detective. How... When will we just stop to embarrass ourselves? How is it possible that somebody that is accused of serial killing, it's to be a murderer is bad enough. For you to be a serial killer is a more serious problem. And then the story of, oh, he went to have a bath and then from there, it, it just sounds preposterous. It sounds almost insulting to, to our intellect. And does it need students or people going to protest for the IG to really, before it even, even leaks out? I want to see that within the next, let me say 48 hours. I don't want to hear all this deploying detective because that's a Nigerian style. Oh, we set up committee, oh, we do this, oh, we do that. And that story just fizzles into thin air and and then and that goes away because you see our leaders have learned to read us like a book they've learned to know that our attention span is so short i could go on a long trail of issues that came up in the media and you know two three days it was buzzing 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 
if it has some level of momentum, it might even be able to take a week. But the next week, it just fizzles into thin air. Right. And the Nigerians have realized that, my guy, relax, it's just a few days, and the whole matter will be swept under the carpet and we will move on with our lives. And I think that the time has come when we need to let our leaders know that we, the citizens, are no longer comfortable. Right. And there are certain things that we will no longer take as citizens. Yeah. That's um, a story that um, I found um, not very interesting. <laughs> then there's a story of um, Fayemi disowning viral presidential. You know, these politicians are just good at their game. And the problem is that I don't mind you dancing, but when you want to dance on top of my head, I find it objectionable. And that is what I find all the time. So they just, you know, uh, what they call it, they just uh, fly, fly a kite and uh, test the waters. Mm -hmm. So while they are at liberty to do what they are doing, we are also at liberty to find out if these things are okay by us. Finally, on this paper, let me rest uh, before on you the move on. story. Sorry, before you this move on. Just, yes. Yeah, before you move on, I'm Go just ahead. I'm just wondering yes. while while we lay the blame on our leaders, you know, for what they do, when do we get to the point where we also take responsibility as you know people as uh, citizens to say, well, we can't take this much. Otherwise, like you said, our leaders read us, and it's easy to tell, um, predict what a, a typical Nigerian would do. Where where do we draw the line where we say, no, enough is enough. We can't take this, even if you are leaders. We put it there in office. I think that that's about the most important question that anybody should ask. And between you and I, I've come to a point where in my life, I have realized that, you know, sitting down and running commentaries when my mother is being raped is, is nonsensical, is not commonsensical, it doesn't make sense. What am I saying? These people are dancing on our heads and we are running commentaries. I think the time has come, and that time is now, when every citizen must rise up. You know, let me just take one or two minutes here and make a certain clarification that is very important. People talk of, you know, protests and, you know, uprising. I'm not a real big fan of protests and uprising because at the end of the day, you have not provided the solution. On the other hand, I'm not a fan at all. I even prefer, prefer protests than just keeping quiet and murmuring inside. So I think that there are one, two, three stages that we must um, interrogate. We've gone through three stages. We must enter the fourth stage as an imperative. Stage one is hear something we've heard. Stage two is see something we've seen. Stage three is, um, uh, number one, you hear something, you see something, you say something. That is stage three. Now, we have talked enough. Stage four is do something. That thing that we must do as a people is for us to say, how do we change the narrative? And that's not going to come from protest. It's going to come through strategic thinkers sitting down, interrogating the system, and taking a very informed and decisive action on lines of action to take to rescue Nigeria. Mm. It is within this context that I really, really, really uh, appreciate and uh, appreciate that's what I'll say. The words of some elders like Professor Patutomi, like um, Right Honorable Galen Harbour, who have come to say, let the elite, the enlightened people, come together and seek a way forward. Because this issue of PDP, APC, is just an evil wind that blows no man, no good. So when we come, we sit down and ask ourselves, how do we evolve proper leadership um, profiling criteria? How do we provide a roadmap to take Nigeria out of the country? Can you run a country successfully without operating on principles of best governance practices? 
And are they doing that? If they are not, not doing that, what can we do? So the time has come for the citizens not to run to the street without the solution, but to come together under certain umbrellas like the Nigeria Consultative Forum and profile solution to take us to where we want to go. It's possible. So that's a very amazing question you've asked, and that's really where we belong right now. All right, may I crave your indulgence to say we have to move on to the second paper in the interest of time. Uh, so the next paper By will be <laughs> The Guardian, um, already displayed there for you. Uh, I mean, not just you, for everyone. And I, I'll just read as follows. Um, national security threatened as 8.4 billion uh, scanner project stalls. Uh, that's from the Guardian newspaper. And it is there displayed for you on the screen. And it says, customs resorts to 100% physical examination. Ease of doing business suffers total collapse here in Nigeria. Uh, stakeholders lament um, uh, influx of illicit arms and drugs. That's the reason the front page there, as you can see. And then um, we have confusion over Mam and Dora's health and tree. It's on... It's there in the newspaper. I'm wondering why we're saying confusion. Well, village head, um, non, I'm afraid that that's not legible. We can just proceed to other students march for reopening of tertiary institutions. Um, and then if not to ground the economy, I believe that's what is there. My appointment as Unilag acting vice chancellor uh, um, in order says Professor Shoyombo. Also, and then we have the ECOWAS imposes economic diplomat and economic and diplomatic sanctions on Mali, and um, that story is also on the front page, but it's continued on page six, I believe. And then we have again the reminder of uh, COVID nineteen updates. Um, just to say that in Nigeria, I think we have we had it on the news that we have passed the fifty thousand um, mark. So Nigeria is at, at today fifty thousand four hundred and eighty eight confirmed cases. Thankfully, 37,304 have been discharged, and unfortunately, 985 persons have died as a result of COVID-19. I'll hand over now to you, Ms. Tenya Etok, to uh, come in with your thoughts on any of the headlines there. The very first thing is the scanner project in, um, at the port. National security threatened as the scanner project stalls. I'm looking at national security exclusively because national security, we have not looked at it holistically um, to interrogate it, to find out exactly what the imperatives are and the, what the must-dos are. But let's go into the scanner uh, project. Now, the very first is... Um, I don't know, there's a story I was reading and um, I find it um, disturbing. How can the customs generating so much revenue not be given every single instrument and equipment updated so that they can be more efficient, they can be more effective and efficiency and effectiveness combined always bring about more resources. How can we think that customs will work on 100% physical inspection in the world of today? It is unthinkable. And how much are we talking about here? 8.4 billion. What is 8.4 billion in a country like Nigeria? Two, you talk in terms of ease of doing business. It is, we, maybe we have not understand, understood the, 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 the ramifications of this concept of ease of doing business. The bottom line in ease of doing business is that, number one, you attract investors. Investors are not Father Christmas. Investors are not speculators. Investors are people that look at certain indices and decide which country to take their money to. If they bring their money to Nigeria, several things happen. Number one is that our economy becomes more buoyant. Number two is that 
the the pressure on the on the dollar on our exchange becomes less because people are bringing in investment and a lot of those investments can be channeled towards export and the export generates you know a foreign exchange for us so our foreign reserves is better and the value of our naira is shut up so the concept of doing ease of doing business is so large so fast that anything any thinking government will give top priority to everything that has to do with effective you know, deployment of business opportunities in the country just to attract foreign investors. Now, why would we go into all this long debate? Because if you are to get scanners, there are just two questions to ask. Number one is that considering our operations, what is the best technology to deploy? That's number one. Number two is the world has become a global village. If this is the best technology to deploy, where is the best source of this technology? It's just two simple, honest questions. When you get the best, whatever the price is a global standard. But you see, we always want to think in terms of where we are going to have contracts, where we are going to have negotiations, mm -hmm. and it's always about personal interest first before any other thing. That's been the bait, and that's because we are running a country by politicians. Governance can never be run on principles of politics. And the day we are able to draw the line between politics and governance, we will start a country that makes sense. Right. Politics is speaking loud and saying nothing. Wow. Governance is best corporate practices. Governance is sincerity. Governance is focus. Governance is excellence. Governance is integrity. All these words that I have just spoken are antithetical to politics. So we need to come and know that the line has to be drawn between politics and governance. In politics, you look for how to make money for the next election. In governance, you think in terms of how to deploy the resources of the people in the way that it best makes sense to serve the generality of the people. Right. Now, may from I, there, may I, may because I, request... I know that time just doesn't allow me to... Yeah, I'm afraid we're going to take... I'll look at that. I'm afraid that we're going to take the next paper uh, in the interest of time, like you have noticed. So shall we just take this day? I read out the headlines yeah. very quickly and we'll take, I'm afraid, maybe just a story and call it a wrap. So it says CBN Forex inflow declined by $2.43 billion to $9.72 billion in April. The story details of it is there on the front page. It's continued on page eight, I believe. NSC, OPS, Unite to Flight Hike in Cargo Surcharge on page six. And then we have ACF urges the federal government to arrest worsening insecurity in northern states and caution, uh, cautions leaders against inflammatory utterances. Boko Haram abducts 100 people in Kukawa in Borno State. So this is new. Um, essentially, we're still struggling with security in this nation. EFCC probes Apabio Bondei over 81.5 billion uh, naira and, and the deceased expenditure. They're back again in the news. Anti Graft Commission yet to invite minister, says aid. It's on the front page, but this continues on page eight, I believe. And then we have a picture story there also. Um, some condolences visit. Please grab a copy uh, to see what that's about. And lastly, ECOWAS leader meets, uh, meets today over the coup in Mali. The story is on page five. All right, over to you, uh, Ms. Tinya Itok. All right, um, uh, I'll run very quick. On the CDN, luckily for me, I've not done a lot of analysis about the Naira. How can you have the inflow of the Naira, of the dollars, when the operating environment, operation, operational environment is not conducive? We need to think twice. You need to be able to do certain things to get certain things. You talk about the three C's of life. The choices that come to the chances that come to you, all the things that we're going through, they are the chances that come to you. The second C is the choices that we make. And for every choice that we make, there is the consequence. Correct. The chances that come your way, the choices that you make as a people, as a nation, and the consequences. What choices are we making today? What chances are open to us today? Today, Nigerians are unhappy with what's going on. Let me end just one minute on a little story, which I think I've said before. A friend of mine told me about Dr. Joe Wyatt, who was in the U.S., and there was a coup, and he was removed, and he was shocked at how people were celebrating. And he said, wow, 
Do you mean that we were so unpopular? I think the government right now should stand back and interrogate the Arab Spring, the Mali, let Nigeria learn, and we can be the better for it if we learn early. We Thanks for this opportunity. <laughs> all right. Thank you so very much for your time also. And I hope that we all keep the three Cs also in mind. And do keep safe out there. Thank you. All right. That's how we call it a wrap on Off the Press. Remember, the time is 8.30, Monday to Friday, here on Plus TV Africa.